Hey folks, this is Shane from Performance TV. Welcome inside the engine bay of our Porsche 911. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. For those of you new to the channel, this is our Porsche 911. We've just uh, removed the engine and gearbox from it. Um, you can check out the other videos to, to see that. Um, but basically we're stripping this down so that we can install an electric motor in it, uh, namely the motor from Nissan Leaf. In today's video, I wanted to have a look around the space that we've now got and to start to figure out how we're actually going to fit the Nissan Leaf motor into it. So we'll start looking at, I guess, the space itself, what connections are already here, what ones we're gonna be able to get rid of, um, and how we're gonna go about starting to mount the uh, the motor. So join us as we go exploring. So the space I was just sitting in here is essentially uh, the front end of the transmission, rear end of the uh, engine. So this point here is the two uprights for the suspension. Um, so the different parts of the suspension attached top and bottom of that, and that then connects uh, to the rest of the ch chassis in a few different places. There's a cross member that goes here, which we'll be reinstalling, and basically the engine and gearbox used to meet pretty much at this point. Uh, what we've got here is the two um, half shafts sending power to the rear wheels. So we're gonna want the, um, the main part of our Nissan Leaf reduction gear to be mounted in the same place. The gearbox itself then went much further forward. Um, you can see where the pipes are for the coolant. Um, so that space we'll be using for, well, I don't know what we'll be using it for, we'll see. But yeah, let's take a look at this in more detail. Tunnel. It looks like most of what it's used for seems to be, in this car anyway, sending the um, coolant back to the uh, engine. Uh, we will be needing to cool our engine and inverter, or our motor and inverter, but I don't know if we'll necessarily need to use the same diameter of pipes uh, or route them the same direction. Um, what I will be doing is reinstalling the uh, gearbox mount, so the um, bolts that are coming out of the body here We'll be bolting the various parts of the gearbox mount back up, uh, which will give us something to then uh, attach the whatever frame we build for the Nissan Leaf motor to um, before bringing it further forward. But yeah, I don't know what we'll put in the tunnel there, if we'll put anything. Um, potentially it could be big enough for some batteries, but we'll have to go exploring further with that. Um, we'll be able to probably remove a lot of this pipe work and we'll replace it with our own and then we'll need to look at each of these individual pipes and see which ones we actually need. Things like fuel we'll be able to get rid of, things like brakes we'll need to keep. Um, though I probably will put new brake lines in because they are looking pretty corroded. Um, we also need to look at the uh, electrical side of things. So here we've got some connections for the gearbox going up into the into the body. Um, that will obviously need to be removed, but we can certainly use that uh, grommet and that exit point from the body to feed some some of the cabling that will need to go into the the inverter. As to where the motor will sit, um, we're going to have to work within the confines of this space. Um, this cross member here is obviously a structural part of the car. Um, the way these things are constructed, it's a you know monocoque construction, so body and chassis are effectively one, which means you can't just go cutting on things in the body without affecting the rigidity of the car. Uh, we will obviously need to do 
a bit of rust repair to get rid of some surface rust and minor corrosion that's around here and um, make sure that everything is going to stand the test of time. So then here, which is where we are going to have the Nissan Leaf motor, um, you can see the the back of the CV joint that currently goes into the into the wheel hub. These are obviously designed to fit on the Porsche gearbox and are therefore way too wide for the um, for the Nissan Leaf, which or too far spaced, spaced too far apart for the Nissan Leaf, which has the um, the shafts meeting much closer together, um, obviously a much smaller gearbox. So we'll need to get some sort of custom half shafts made up to, to cover that. Once we get forward of, or back behind where the um, motor will, will finish up, um, obviously we'll be reinstalling, as I said before, the cross member between the two suspension uprights that is a you know a key part of the handling of the car but we will then come into this much wider open space where i'm pretty sure we can fit a large proportion of whatever battery pack i end up choosing for this car um, some suspended in the lower part of the engine bay below this, um, this cross rail and then other bits potentially a bit higher up. There's also space going out into the wheel arches where the um, exhaust mufflers used to be. As you can see they're not the smallest things in the world. So there are also other things that we're going to have to look to reroute, reposition and potentially find other ways to drive. Um, one is obviously the power steering, or the, um, new, the hydraulic fluid for the power steering. So that was the pump for that was part of the engine. So the uh, pipes come all the way back here to to get the um, the pressure built up. But the steering's at the front, so we may be able to put an electrically operated power steering pump at the front and get rid of a lot of this uh, pipe work that goes all the way from the front to the back of the car. Um, that's also a consideration for the air conditioning. So this AC unit is, um, again, was mounted on the engine, uh, driven by the belt, the serpentine belt that went around all the components. But again, it's sending uh, pipes all the way back in the car to the front so again we may be able to to remove them. We'll also be looking to reuse the existing engine mounts. In the short term I'll just use the ones that are here but longer term I would like to uh, replace them with new ones just to freshen things up. But we're going to use reuse the um, mounting bracket that is currently attached to the engine I'll, we'll go and take a look at those in a moment. And uh, the attaches, attaches between the engine mounts and comes down and that will give us something to um, attach our custom fabricated frame to. Other things that we can, we're gonna look at being able to get rid of are the engine wiring harness which connects to the ECU as well as things like the oxygen sensors and the MAF. So this is the mounting on the gearbox. Um, it is bolted on but I don't know how easy it's going to be to get off but we'll investigate to see what we can do about reusing um, this actual piece because obviously it's got a good Good amount of kind of dampening through the the rubber which appears to be in pretty good pretty good nick um, so we'll need to investigate how we get that off if we can then we should be able to bolt something onto this unit 
um, to hold on to whatever frame I build for underneath it. If we can't, then we'll find something else that will fit in that space that we can weld something to for the the front mounting of um, the overall unit. And at the rear we've basically got this frame here. Um, so these holes bolt into the uh, actual engine mounts and that's where the, the rubber and the dampening is. Um, and then there are multiple points at which it connects to the engine itself. And again, we can connect something to those uh, in terms of a frame. Um, which we'll obviously need to make strong enough to span the space between the two the two mounts. Uh, I don't want to have to connect it to other points in between because then we start trying ending up with things connected to um, suspension components or other parts of the chassis that might affect uh, either handling or, or stability, which I don't want to screw up because these are very well balanced cars. The next job is, with this is definitely going to be to get this um, mounting frame off and back into the car, bolted up to the engine mounts, and then investigate what we're doing with the gearbox mount at the front. Yeah, this is the space we've got to work with. I'm gonna get the measuring tape out now and double check the dimensions here against the, the Nissan Leaf motor. Um, I'd rather find out about any major issues ahead of time before I start trying to um, trial fit it in here. So looking at the space we've got here, it is quite a tight fit and we're probably going to have to get a little bit creative with things. Um, space between, I guess, the two axle shafts or between the, the cross member at the point where the axles need to go out is actually fine. There's, there's enough space there. Um, the challenges will be, I guess, what's forward of that, so how it interacts with the uh, cross member that goes here, um, as well as what's the other side of it. Um, so the actual reduction gear that puts the drive out through the axles to the wheels would stop here and then you're getting into the motor unit itself. There's enough clearance at this point for everything, but it gets a little bit tougher once you go in here and you start to get into the space where the where the rear seats are. Um, I'm hoping I won't have to take anything out of that but rather do something there than with these um, more structural items but it's probably going to be a case of having to get the the motor in under here um, and try and then um, lift it up into place and see where it starts to foul and figure out what we can do to, to prevent that happening. I think no matter what, I'm essentially going to have to remove probably every cable, pipe, hose and wire that runs through here. Um, so we get completely clear out of this area, figure out how we fit the motor and then figure out how we route everything after that. Um, so definitely a few challenges ahead. but that should just make it all the more interesting. So thanks for joining us for this investigation video. It's been really cool to see inside the space I've got um, to work with. <laughs> I think ironically, stuff like battery space that people often struggle with isn't gonna be a problem in this car or with this conversion the way I'm doing it. The problem's actually gonna be trying to fit the motor in the format that I want to do it, so the direct drive. Uh, without impacting the bodywork of the car. Um, there is there's a lot of measuring, detail measuring and trial that I'm going to have to do to see if it, see how we can fit things. Um, there may be some pieces that we can take off the motor 
we'll have to we'll have to see as as we get into it. Um, the next jobs really are going to be trying to strip out the space as much as I can, so moving aside any wires and pipes and stuff, um, refitting the mounts so that I can see the um, where things can attach to, um, and then probably getting the the leaf motor into the space on a jack and and putting it up in and seeing how it turns out. Um, so yeah, plenty to do. Uh, try and bring you along for for the journey but till next time thanks for watching uh, if you've liked what I've seen you've not already subscribed please subscribe uh, click the notify icon if you want to get more updates on on what we're doing um, but till then thanks for watching and see you next time